welcome back to Tyranny. All right. Time to journey back to the Scarlet Chorus camp. Fifth Eye, commander of the loyal local Scarlet Chorus, surveys his camp, watching in stillness as all manner of violence and revelry occur around him. He offers a slight nod at your approach. Is there anything else? What is your role in the chorus? While the whole of the chorus remains loyal to the voices of the rap, I'm truly the most loyal. His voice becomes wistful. Oh, so loyal, his enormous warriors. He's a Crimson Spear, part of the Archon's inner circle. Thus is the strongest gang boss's answer to him. And from there, the orders trickle down to the rest of the army. I am the Archon's martial retainer and humble servant. I am his eyes and his ears, but also his mouth. For I speak with his authority when he is absent. He twirls his flanged spear in, the, in his hand. And I am his killing edge when the rabbles move to war. Good thing you mentioned loyalty twice. Now I'm really convinced. The fifth eye stares at you, arms folded. He says nothing. When did you take the vows of the chorus? Unlike most of the conscripts here, I did not need a cudgel against the head to see the wisdom of the Archon of Secrets. I probably joined the chorus in its nascent days, left my home in the bastard city, to join with the incoming chorus, and the rest is glory and history. These days you follow the chorus or die. We who choose the path We who choose the path of kill to defend our place are the old guard. Even if it's been two or three years, the chorus has a short memory. She nods the fifth eye with grudging respect. What can you tell me about Ascension Hall? At the center of Vendrian's well, at the base of the mountain spire, it points to the northeast where the spire cuts a vertical line rising above all other mountains in the horizon. It is a small fortification. Ascension Hall is the name of the citadel, the citadel's innermost council chamber. We had left the garrison when the barrier was first taken in 429, with the citadel being their base of operation. When the Oathbreakers staged the revolt, the garrison at Ascension Hall was defeated. It makes sense that Kairos' edict would demand that we burn this rebellion back to its point of origin. Let me know this favorite commander. Iron Marshal Arenios is a doting warrior, just like the Archon of War. She's one of a few select disfavored, cautious and cowardly enough to be trusted with the Archon's Iron Toddlers. No doubt her primary qualifications include being related to Ash. The legions a bit big into its pedigree, if you catch my drift. Though I am loath to speak highly of her, I cannot deny she is a brilliant swordsman. And the other disfavored seem to take her seriously, despite the serious stick that's propped up her backside. Who's the strongest in your camp? I am naturally. Well, the Archon is, without question, the mightiest in camp. Defnell is the master trainer here, and she's almost tough enough to take me. She's a fighter, don't tell her I told you that, but she can be trusted to fight and lead. And while her humility is lacking, Verse is correct. She's been running with the Furies even longer than Defnell. Too bad that skill and puissance did nothing to save her sisters. What happened to her sisters? I understand that her little torchlight here became the victim of her own mortality. 
a spasm of discomfort or hesitation, state or sort and shatter the focus of a coordinated attack. Did I have uh, the right of it, dear? Look, don't ask. I'll tell you about it in my own time. Is there a reliable quartermaster or peddler in the camp? Yes, I'd very much like to know that. Talk to Sniggler Dagos. He's wise enough to not to steal from you, and he'll only cheat you a little bit. He's right over there. He points nearby to the east. But he has the important honor of arming, trying to arm, all the merry little conscripts. So don't expect Kairos' armory or anything. Upon noticing your approach, the merchant straightens his posture and smiles. What an honor! The name's Sniggler Dagos. Originally from the relative tranquility of the Northern Empire, I have since accepted a nomadic life for the sake of keeping Kairos' forces supplied with only the finest goods, local and imported. I would got. He winces a little. It's not much, but let me know if you see anything that piques your interest. No, you're right when you said it's not much. Um, first things first, let's sell off most of this. Gives me some money to work with. Can't afford it too. What else is there? Sigil of channel strength. Take that. Sigil of precise action. I believe I do have I already have a sigil of favor. I don't need camping supplies. Um, Then a cone. I should get this to. No, still doesn't have a high enough floor, huh? Okay, well, I'll learn it later. So, what's this like? Serum. Oh, that's that um, Archon of Song. A young woman stands flanked by a pair of soldiers. The ornate headdress cresting her, her brow lends her otherwise small figure an intimidating aspect. From gear to gown, everything about her subtly contrasts the wretched state of the camp. She looks both at ease and uncomfortable, composed in her element and completely unsure. She turns to you. Greetings, worm. Her voice takes you off guard. It is bare of any inflection, and yet full of beautiful music. If you didn't know better, you would guess that she is actively suppressing or modulating her vocal tone.
You look familiar. Have we met? You don't know me, little worm? I am Siren, and my degenerate allies have the pleasure of calling me the Archon of Song. You hear the distant peal of a bell on her lap. She regards you for a moment with dim interest. And you are Tunine's Fatebinder. What brings you here to the middle of the battlefield? Did Cairo send you to shame Ash and Nerat into action? S something like that. Ash certainly needs someone to dig a heel into his back, only to distract him from his problem. She purses her lips in thought. But Nerat, he's just a cat playing with a realm-sized mouse, isn't he? And what makes you an expert in such delicate matters? I've been privy to more delicate matters in the last five years than you've had your entire career binding fates. I'm well versed with political intricacies. She waves her hand, brushing away the conversation. Anyway, we have a more important matter to deal with. There is something you can do to assist me. Oh, really? From the corner of your eye, you see Burst cup her hands to her ears, turning her head away from Siren. Siren's mouth opens in a perfect bow shape, and the sound that pours out is captivating, entrancing. It dampens the ambient bustle of the camp, until it seems that nothing exists but her voice. Remove my helmet. The ruby headpiece on her brow flashes, as if in warning. What are you trying to do to me? Really? That's it? How disappointing. It was worth a try, I suppose. Though it appears to have been a colossal waste of effort. She sighs and gives a sheeping smile. I hoped you would assist me in a... delicate matter. But it appears you're more nuisance than help. I have no further use for you. Perhaps later. You're dismissed, Fatebinder. She brushes you away with a wave. Not as powerful as you imagine yourself to be, are you? I said dismissed until I have further need of you. Your presence displeases me. This time her voice takes on a different quality. It screeches like a piece of flint stuck in a grinding wheel. You can feel it down near your toes. And you want nothing more than to make a hasty exit before the Archon inflicts more of her terrifying song. For the love of Kairos! That was the Archon of Song in the flesh! Darting his head for a furtive look back at Siren, Lantry sighs in awe. Don't be so dumbstruck. dumbstruck. I don't exactly meet Archons on a regular basis. Maybe to you, this is just Judge's Day. Pretty much. Ah, oh, sweet, my lore increased. Wait, I have 42 lore. I should be able to read that. Yeah, why well, wasn't I able to do this before? Oh, because I still had it on the portrait of, uh, gotcha. I'll make some spells later. Oh, we got some beasts. Night Yowl. A young beastman stands in the shadows of an enormous beast woman whose stature still manages to loom over you, even in her crouched position. The beastman's mouth froths with spittle that launches in every direction as he snarls at her. Not Yao was promised worthy, tough prey for joining, but Beast Woman only allows Night Yao to hunt the weakest of humans, save best kills for self. Pounds the earth, causing a small fissure to erupt. Night Yao was second strongest of the Stone Stalker males before joining Scarlet Humans. Rutted even with Hundred Boot, with Tribe's Primer, was promised own pack for abandoning tribe mates. Claws of throat. The crouched beast woman lets out a deafening cackle, her broad, sharp teeth appearing between each bellow. Strong stone stalker. Beastman worth running. She snorts, no. Closet throat sees only mewling first season cub before beast woman now. She only sees only tenderfoot, only weak whelp fit to chase injured, dying prey. Not best fighters on the battlefield. 
Night Yow bears his teeth and lunges for the beast woman. But she is swift to stand, hat was raised, and a callous palm far larger than his head harshly pins him to the ground in one death swipe. His face smashes into the earth with a whip-like crack of stone followed by a defeated whimper. Closet throat stares down at you with as much regard as she might show the wild dogs that roam the camp. Human? Closet throat. She sniffs in your direction, and her nose wrinkles as she scowls, disgusted by a foul scent. Humans, she hacks. Always are encroaching on Beast Woman. Have no sense of danger, no recognition of prowling, hungry predators, are worse than sniveling beastmen. She grinds the beastman's face deeper into the dirt before lifting a clod and gnarled fingers off of him. He quickly scrambles to his feet, to bruise his head, to nurse his head. Speak quickly, and maybe the beast woman will listen. Bare your teeth in a wild, dangerous grin. Don't worry, I know how to properly respect the beast. Allow me to gift you an offering of blood and bone. The beast woman perks up at your enticing words. She sniffs you curiously, more thoroughly than before, as she smacks her lips softly, longingly, beginning to slather and drool. For a moment you think she'll make a grab for you, but she merely sits back on her haunches, relaxed and watching you, pleasantly peeked as she scratches the taut stretch of her hard-muscled stomach. Yes, beast women like gifts of blood and bone, of fresh gills, but Closet Throat does not want such treats now. Instead, Little Blood Claw will join Beast Woman in hot slaughter of humans. In one season soon, she spreads her massive maws in a deadly grin. A tribery from Beast. She puffs her dirty, hairy teats and purrs with pride. Closet Throat was born of tribe with no name and no lands, called Summer Snout, by tearsmen who stole Azure lands from the tribe's ancestry. Then Closet Throat became Great Stone Stopper, slaughtered own slavers and fought for tribe's freedom. Tribe who became strong, unbreakable as stone, because of earth mythic mystic called Archon Cairn. She sniffs at the memory, but now Cairn sleeps and dreams drifting slowly into death in stone lands. Hundred blood protects free tribe, and Closet Throat fights to kill more tears than a stalker's a Scarlet Stalker. How did you come to join the Scarlet Chorus? Human pack called Scarlet Chorus is vicious, cunning, feral, like tribes, like beast woman. She snarls, but the sound is pleased and rumbling, nearly at her as she cranes her face in the direction of voices in the rat's war tent. Chorus humans are dirty and reek like rotten meat, so easily shriek and tear our own throats, but also respect strongest of pack. The beast women are strongest of all creatures, our best predators, like Archon called the rat. Pack's fierce and ruthless alpha, this mystic who can swallow prey, blood and bones whole, makes beast women want to rut fight, kill. Makes Beast Woman want to wreck that kill she sighs hungry. Makes Beast Woman wanna. What's going on here? Human has keen eyes, yes? Can see Beast Woman as disciplining, insolent pack mate. She snaps a menacing sneer at the cow beastman. Mewling, whimpering male. Night Yao will learn Beastman's rank in new pack or will not survive for many seasons longer. And I'm not gonna fight it just yet. Another time. Hey Finder, I hope you're exercising your education privileges on those disfavored. Kairos knows they need it. A little judgment will go a long way here. Tell me about your time in the Scarlet Chorus. Reg and I were conscripted at the Gates of Judgment. He used to fight before Okan, me for Azure. Bass chuckles, stretching her chin in thought, scratch, sketching her chin in thought. How many fights we survived so far? Eleven? 
where it begins to count in a series across the fingers. No, 14. I count each day and Sunday separately. The chorus is, Baz looks about the camp and shrugs. Not as bad as it smells. The strong like me and Reg, we're allowed to take what we want, what we deserve. We live only as well as our strength affords us, as it should be. What do you know about Vendrian's well? The walls might seem imposing, but the Vendrian guard do a better job of hiding its weaknesses and fixing them, she shrugs. We took the Citadel once before, we can take it again. We have to, don't we? Reg looks up at the imposing tower of the spire. Though Kairos knows I don't want to stay any longer than necessary. She follows his gaze and shakes her head. You should know better than to parade your cowardice before the fate finder. It's not cowardice, it's just superstition. Are you afraid of the spire? I... sorry. Fate binder, I shouldn't have mentioned anything. Besides. The fact of the matter is, we were told to stay away from the spires and old walls ever since we were babes. Of all the dumb childhood lessons that fell by the wayside, that one stayed the same. Imagine a soldier of the chorus pissing himself over our architecture. More like what's underneath it, Greg frowns. The Bane lurk around those old sites and kill anything they can catch unawares. I have no wish to meet the Bane in combat unless there are a hundred blood chanters at my back. She twists her lip into a frown as she considers this. Me neither, I suppose. Let's see. Let get a little bit of training here. Uh, yeah. Train those. Dual wield. Uh... I'll take two points in that. I think, I remember at the other camp there's dodge and I want her to learn some of that. And I think that's it for here for now. Salvaros. Hail, Fate Binder of Tunan. The disfavored war officer pounds a heavy gauntlet against his chest in a stiff but warm greeting. Were I a betting or a superstitious man, I'd say fortune must favor me today. I am not. But I am pleased to meet you all the same. Now, what brings you to my little slice of personal damnation, otherwise known as. He spreads his thickly gloved hands wide. This here mud and shit stinking chorus can. Have you anything you'd like to report, soldier? Maybe you've noticed something unusual during your time here. He cants his head to one side, taken aback. What about the chorus? Is it unusual? The army itself is a strange, malnourished beast. Now, now the screamers seem mostly in order, man. And I haven't been spying, if that's what you're implying, man. Still, as a post, he studies you sharply, scarcely appearing to breathe. Of course, even if I was, I'd be, it'd be damn near impossible to learn anything from this shit style. Fifth time, those damn furies don't even loop me in enough to do my detail. That's not a lack of trying on my part. What do you mean? I'm not just here to keep a steady eye on the Oathbreakers, who they give far too much freedom after conscripting. I'm here to be a resource for the benefit of both armies. I can provide insight regarding proper s stratagem and requ request a stock of troops from Iron Marshal Arrhenios for reinforcements if needed. They won't listen to me, nor confide in me, nor fight beside the brethren I could request. Why are you stationed with the chorus? From the way most of my days go, you'd think I was here to row with the Blood Chanters and Scarlet Furies, but my post is to represent the disfavored's interests before Fifth Eye and the Scarlet Chorus choruses before Iron Marshal Arrhenios. Not that I've gotten to do either. 
in as much as of the last span. You sound frustrated. I am. He tips his helm back enough to spit at the ground. You try having to fist fuck every fury who wants to talk to you. And that's after I try to talk them down. It's a Cairo's damn mess. You act like it's punishment to be assigned to this detail. Isn't it? I know I fucked up to get here. Got three days in a hole and a nice little promotion to go to my new post. Well, I won't be making the same mistake twice when it comes to the Iron Marshal. He juts his chin towards the distant valley. I should be out there, fighting for Ash's glory, not standing here ready to run back or report should something ever finally fucking happen. What exactly did you do to end up here? Okay. My lives are at risk and even then you can't get along with the chorus? Begging your pardon, man, but I've never fought a battle where my life was on the line, he shrugs. Kind of the nature of war, isn't it? You got, a, you got a point. Oh, she made it. Her eye slowly cleans a rusting blade and nods at you with a distant stare. Seems all there is to do here for now. Off to go uh, to the disfavored camp. So we'll leave off here and we'll go do that next time.